over 80% of pets will develop dental disease by age two. Hey, pet parents. This is Dr. Katie, the natural pet doctor. Do you know the, what the most common disease for your dogs and cats are? Over 80% of pets have this. So I want you to listen in, grab a pen and paper because you're going to want it for today's coffee talk with the doc. We're taking a deep dive into dental disease and what that means for your pet, but most importantly, why does it happen and how do we treat it? How do we prevent it? Through food, supplements, and supporting whole body health. So as always, thank you for being here live with me. If you have questions, pop them in in that comment box. We'll make sure we answer those for you guys because that's what we're here for, to help empower amazing pet parents like you guys, to help your dogs and your cats live their best, most vibrant life. So first off, have you ever noticed a stinky smell from your dogs or cats' mouths? If you have, put a thumbs up, heart, whatever it is. Um, so, so common, over 80% of pets will develop dental disease by age two, two years old. That's it, they're gonna have some form of dental disease. So what exactly is dental disease? Of course, you know, if we know our dogs have bad gums, they're irritated red, they have bad smelling mouths, you'll see that tartar plaque buildup on their teeth that you can't brush off. But what dental disease truly is, is inflammation in the mouth. So periodontal disease, there's different stages of dental disease also. And so when you go to the vet, a lot of times you'll hear, oh, they have grade one dental disease. So they might have a little bit of tartar buildup or a little bit of plaque, or if they have grade four dental disease, we may see these pets losing teeth or have mobile teeth, or you can see a lot of like thick tartar buildup on, especially those back upper molars, those premolars, and they need dentals and they're having teeth extracted and all sorts of things are happening and we don't wanna go there, right? We don't wanna do general anesthesia, put our pets under anesthesia to clean the teeth. It's necessary at points. But there's a lot we can do to prevent it. And one of the things that you may be doing right now may actually be making it worse. So we're gonna talk about that because this is really, really important and a common misperception in the vet world. So this is very important, but let's talk about the different stages and what dental disease looks like as it develops in your dog and cat, since 80% of pets will have some form of dental disease by age two years old. So it starts with food particles. And you can probably relate to this. This is why we should be brushing our teeth twice a day and flossing and going to the dentist every six months. So food particles, you eat food, your pets eat food, and they can get food particles on their teeth. And brushing those teeth brushes away food particles. Food particles don't stick to the teeth. What happens though is that can turn into what's called dental plaque. So this is the next step of dental disease. So dental plaque is this sticky biofilm that actually adheres to the tooth structure, the surface. And a lot of times we can brush that away also. We can remove that mechanically. We can, sometimes you'll hear like kibble will remove it. That's abrasive action that we're going to talk about and talk a little bit about how the common misperception about kibble, but plaque will return within 24 hours. And if the plaque stays long enough, what it turns into is that tartar. That's that thickening of that gross stuff where you're just like trying to chip it off. Have you ever done that with your pets? And this is what we use the scalers when we do a dental cleaning under anesthesia. We're actually physically scaling that tartar off because we can't brush it away. It's very difficult to remove. And tartar is actually, a, it's a composite. So it's a deposit of calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate. And these are actually in the saliva. 
And so the pet's mouth, our mouths, we're producing saliva that has these components in it that if we're not keeping the mouth clean, we're not feeding the body the right foods, what happens is, is it creates an environment where the tartar and the plaque will build up, leading to the need for dental dental cleanings every year, how, like however frequent. Some pets, they go in for dental cleanings twice a year, but I'm gonna tell you some things that we can do right away. So that doesn't need to be your pet, okay? But we need to understand a lot of these dental diets, what they'll have in them, they'll talk about the kibble size creates an abrasive mechanical action to remove the tartar buildup. But also there's things that are in that food. So we can use chemicals. We can use things like sodium polyphosphates. This is in a lot of those dental specific diets. It, they've been added to chews, your kibble foods. And what it does is it blocks the calcium cations that are made in the body, that are in the saliva, that are actually needed to form the plaque. So it's stopping that process from happening. And so that's, that's really important to know that it's not all up to the kibble action, the mechanical action to break off the plaque, clean the tartar, those types of things. So does kibble really, really help? No, it doesn't. And this is, you're going to hear something probably very different from a conventional vet. And this is what we were taught in vet school, but I'm here to tell you, kibble does not help. The size of the kibble, adding in chemicals, yes, we can actually reduce tartar. There are studies that show that, but do we want to be using a chemical? Or would we rather be using something that's natural, that your pet can chew on, that's not going to cause harm to their body? Now, kibble, we talk a lot about kibble here at the Natural Pet Doctor because it is not a biologically appropriate food for our dogs, and especially cats. Cats are obligate carnivores. They need meat. They don't need carbohydrates. Kibble is high in carbohydrates. Dogs are a little bit different and they're, they're more omnivorous. So they have more different digestive enzymes. They can tolerate higher carbohydrate content, but we don't wanna be feeding them simple carbs because what happens with kibble is kibble turns into sugar. So kibble, high carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates, it's converted into sugar in the body. So commercial pet foods typically contain about 40% sugary sugars and carbs because carbs turn into sugar typically. So huge, right? We should not be using kibble to prevent dental disease. And also when we look at a lot of these kibble foods, they have corn, soy glutens, and these can leave microparticles on the teeth, adhering to the teeth. And as I mentioned, so we have food particles, then we have plaque. We can still brush away plaque. And then what happens is it can be very difficult to get under those gums and, and remove the plaque right at the gum line. Very difficult, very difficult to brush. We're not flossing there. I've had some clients that actually can floss their dog's teeth. Incredible. And someone just asked a question about essential oils with dogs and cats. So we're going to relate that to dental disease and I'm going to touch on those. So make sure you have your pen and paper because we're going to talk about some really cool natural ways that you can help your pet's oral cavity. So stay tuned for that. So kibble, not ideal. We talk about a lot, not a big fan of kibble. It is necessary sometimes if you can't do a home balanced home cooked diet, if your pet doesn't tolerate transitioning to a raw balanced diet. However, we have to keep in mind that there's going to be more dental disease buildup because we're feeding a kibble diet, because it's higher carbs. And what exactly is it doing? We talk a lot about microbiome. It's affecting the microbiome. The oral cavity is the start of the microbiome in your pet's body. And when we're causing inflammation because of what we're feeding our pets, we lead to more dental disease. And when we have dental disease, we have inflammation, bacterial infections in the mouth, it affects the rest of the body. 
So then we see things like kidney disease. Have you ever heard, even for human health, you know, you need to keep your teeth, your, your mouth clean. You need to have your dental cleanings because that bacteria can affect your heart, your heart valves, your kidneys, the liver's affected. We tend to forget this in conventional medicine, that everything is connected. Everything affects everything else. And when we don't take care of one system, it's going to affect the overall health of your pet. It's just a fact. Same with us. We don't take care of our teeth. We're going to potentially develop kidney disease, heart, have heart issues. It's all interrelated. And we have this specific microbiome in our pet's mouths. There's certain bacteria that are there doing good things. There's a lot of studies that have come out showcasing how we can use probiotics to support the good bacteria, reduce inflammation. And if you go back to last week's coffee talk with the doc, we talked about microbiome and how food can affect that. And our microbiome, whether it's in the mouth, whether it's in the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, it's connected to every single tissue in our body. And we see effects from food within three days, changing that bacterial population in the microbiome. So there's different bacteria in the mouth. But a lot of times what they've done is they've done research to show that they can see some of these more harmful bacteria populations in a, a pet's mouth that has like grade four dental disease. So really severe dental disease. You can actually see that bacteria in their stomach, in the GI tract. So it's passing through, they're swallowing it and it's potentially affecting the rest of the microbiome and offsetting the good balance. So remember, everything is connected. So what do we do? Okay, diet, diet's a foundation for health. The microbiome is directly affected. The microbiome must be healthy to have a healthy pet. Just posted on this this morning, a happy pet equals a happy, or a health, happy microbiome equals a happy pet. Because when we, we nourish and we treat that microbiome with care, with the right foods, the right supplements, reducing stress, your pet will have reduced inflammation and less disease, which is what we're all here for, right? I know this is why I got into vet medicine and why I love doing this because how do I keep my pets healthy? How do I keep my client's pets healthy? That's the goal. No one ever wants a sick pet and to go in and out of the vet clinic, right? So what do we do? Okay, kibble, you just said kibble's bad. Okay, Dr. Katie, now what? So let's talk about what are the things that you can do to help your pet's dental health so that you are not having to necessarily go in once a year for an anesthetic dental cleaning. In some pets, genetics play a part. We see differences with small breeds, large breeds. So brachycephalic breeds that have the little smush face, they have crowded mouths. So your smaller dogs, the dogs that have hair, long hair around their mouth, they can trap food and bacteria a lot more easily. It can be harder to clean their mouths by brushing. They build up dental disease faster. And those pets typically need to have dental cleanings more frequently. But by doing the things I'm about to mention, you can reduce the amount of cleanings that your pet needs, saving you money, saving you time, saving you worry, saving you vet visits. Who, who gets worried about anesthesia with their pets? I do, and I did dentals and anesthesias, but I was still always worried. There is still always a risk with anesthesia. There is a time and a place when the pet truly needs it. So we have to keep that in mind also because I don't want you to not go down that path. If your pet has a bad tooth and it needs to be extracted, we need to take care of it because what happens with chronic dental disease, bad teeth, bad gums, inflamed gums, is we allow chronic inflammation, chronic pain, bacterial infections that can lead to other health problems down the road. So we do need to take care of that. So I'm not against dental cleanings. There, we need to be doing those. 
but we also need to be talking about how food is affecting your pet's mouth because that's not talked about. It's just once a year, you're going to get a dental cleaning. Who's heard that at wellness exams? Oh, we're at grade two dental disease. Guess what? We have a dental special in February. Make sure you take advantage of that. This was part of my talk every year with pets. So I get it. And there is a time and a place, but why aren't we talking about, you know what? I'm starting to see some dental disease, some tartar buildup, you know, before it turns into like grade three, grade four, let's change the diet. What foods are you feeding? What supplements can you give? What probiotics can you use? That is the conversation that needs to happen at vet clinics. That's what we need to learn in vet school. How do you prevent this from getting worse? And keeping pets on kibble diets is keeping pets oral cavities bad. There is a time and a place, and that's where we look at, okay, what quality of the kibble? Let's make sure there's not corn and these soy glutens in there that are leaving those food particles so we can look at all of that. And I get jazzed about this because there's so much we can do to prevent dental disease, and we're not talking about it. So that's why we're talking about it today, because this month is focused on microbiome. The microbiome is so important in the oral cavity, the GI tract, so important. So what can you do? Number one, food. Are you feeding a biologically appropriate diet? So can we transition that pet off of a kibble food to a balanced home cooked diet, to a balanced raw diet? There are a lot of great companies out there that I love, Answers Pet Food, we have Darwin's, we have Just Food for Dogs, we have Nom Nom Now, we have the Farmer's Dog. We have so many options for balanced, amazing quality pet foods. Those are just a few. There are so many and there's so many more coming. So even if you don't have the time, the resources, or want to cook for your pets, we still have other options. And if you can't do a, one of these diets all the time, do it at least a couple days a week. They can get very expensive. I totally understand. We used to cook for Finn, 75 pound German Shepherd. It's expensive. Like I get it. However, the long-term results from doing this will save you more money than anything else. I would have started this from day one with Finn if I knew I could potentially prevent his brain tumor. I would have done it immediately. Knowing what I know now, the pain that we had going through Finn's cancer treatments, diagnosing cancer, watching him go through seizures, I would change it in a heartbeat. It is worth the money and you will gain more time with them, more quality time, and they'll feel better. So biologically appropriate diets. You have a cat. Cats are prone to getting bad teeth. You know why? They're on kibble food. They're an obligate carnivore. They need meat. Of course, they're going to develop dental disease. And how many of you have ever seen your dogs devour like their kibble? Like, yes, there are some dogs that chew their food. But how many of you have a dog that eats their food in like 10 seconds flat? You're just like, is that good for them? Like it's now there's a bowl of kibble sitting in their belly, like just sitting there, this kibble, like just literally sitting there. Now they have to digest it. So we have to think about that theory, like, yeah, they chew the kibble, it's the mechanical action, it's taking away the tartar, the plaque buildup, but is it? Because my cat, as we're transitioning her, nine years of having kibble, she's an adopt, adopted senior cat, loves her kibble. And the thing is, is she doesn't, they don't chew, they swallow it whole. And what is that kibble doing? Simple carbs, turning into sugar, changing the microbiome and the oral cavity, leading to inflammation, which sets up the perfect environment for bacteria overgrowth, bad bacteria. And so we need to get cats off kibble. So feeding, if you can't do either home-cooked diet, raw diet, some pets need to transition to raw because their microbiomes aren't ready for a raw diet or they might have some other properties. There's different energies with this food too that I always look at and each pet is individual. 
So one diet doesn't necessarily fit all. So keep that in mind. But what we can do is we can try to transition them and do some of the other things we're going to talk about. But getting them onto a more biologically appropriate diet, getting your cats off of kibble onto a high quality cat food. I mentioned catinfo.org a lot. There's amazing resources there where you can look at carb content, protein content, phosphorus content, and you can look at all the brands for canned foods and decide this food works the best for me, for my budget, for my cat's health. So we need to be thinking about that. What are some treats you can give? So there's a lot of talk about treats and dental treats and what we can use. Raw, meaty bones. Number one, and I saw this with Finn physically, like he had some tartar buildup on the back, so those upper fourth premolars, common area, and we don't necessarily see them. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a challenge this, this month for the rest of the month actually for the rest of the year. Once a week, take a look at your pet's mouth. Look under the tongue, pull the gums back, look at those back teeth. Because a lot of times we don't see anything here. It's all back here, the disease, the inflammation. So we need to be looking at that to assess, is my pet's oral cavity healthy? And one of the things that we can do is we're also looking to make sure there's no lumps or bumps in the mouth. They can develop things like melanomas, squamous cell carcinoma. So we want to be checking for that once a week or at least once a month, if anything, put it on the calendar. And you're also going to get a better idea is what I'm doing is what I'm feeding helping my pet. So raw meaty bones, so knuckle bones. The biggest concern that vets will have with feeding bones as like a dental chew are fractures. And what happens is, is they'll get what's called a slab fracture. So a pet is chewing on say like an antler and they'll actually shear off the enamel off the tooth, especially on those big chewing teeth in the back, the upper fourth premolars, the lower premolars. And then you're like, dang it, now I have to go and have this tooth extracted or get a root canal with a dentist. And so a lot of people are fearful of using these bones, but a raw knuckle bone. So the guidelines with this, what, the, what it does is it can actually grind off the tartar through the mechanical chewing action. And when we use bigger diameter bones, so I say for these bones, the criteria you're looking at is the bone as big as my dog's head? It sounds crazy, right? It's a pretty big bone. But when you think about the knuckle bones, they're pretty round and robust. And the mechanical action and the amount of pressure that your dog uses to chew these bigger diameter bones is less. And so you're going to have less chance. It can still happen. It, so I always tell people, like, when you do this, there is a risk. But there's also a risk that feeding, you know, kibble will also make your teeth, dog's teeth worse. And then you're spending hundreds or thousands on dental care every year. So, but looking at the bone size and watching them, so making sure that they can tolerate eating bones is appropriate. So Sherry, great question. We feed chicken legs. Are they strong enough for dental care? So they can definitely help. So these chicken legs with the tissues around them. So when we, we used to feed Finn chicken wings and he would just grind them up and all the muscle meat and tendons and ligaments and bones and crunching. And so that definitely can help. So what you could also do is maybe once a week, add in a raw meaty knuckle bone to help with the dental aspect. They don't necessarily eat the entire bone. So we're not using it for potentially that calcium content if we are doing either a raw diet or a home cooked diet but we're using it to really clean their teeth and help. And I saw it with Finn. He'd start building up that tartar and you give him a bone and it was gone. And I'm like, oh, he doesn't need a dental. Look at that. That works. That was fantastic. Where you don't want to use these. So listen up. This is not for every pet. So if your pet has pancreatitis or prone to pancreatitis, has diseases in the mouth, so either masses in the mouth, they have bleeding, severe gingivitis, gum inflammation, any uh, broken teeth or their teeth are weak. 
or they're resource garters. So like you have other pets in the house and they like get really like growly. They take their bone away. They get weird when you give them a high value treat or gulpers. So they take something and it's gone. Like I have clients that have pets that swallow toys whole, no joke toys, like just gone. I'm like, why would you eat that? What are you doing? Like this makes no sense. So if you have a dog or a cat like that, don't use these for them because you may run into foreign body obstructions if they swallow the thing whole. Um, like resource garters can like just swallow it whole because they don't want the other pet to have it. So there is a time and a place for using these for your pet. But definitely number one, like hands down, these will clean your, they will clean your dog's teeth, your cat's teeth. So one of the um, common questions that I get for cats when they're onto a canned food diet or a raw diet is they're like, I feel like my cat's teeth are getting worse. So that's where we want to look at what are the ingredients in that food? Are we using a lot of carbohydrates? If we are, we need to look at potentially if we can reducing the amount of carbs, increasing the protein content, making sure there's not that soy gluten, carrageenan, things that can cause inflammation and cause the food particles to attach to the teeth more. The other thing that you can do to help your cats clean their teeth is you can use chunks of that raw meat if they can tolerate a raw diet. And that's the, the chewing action that the cat has to do will help. So that's the mechanical abrasive action to take that tartar off the teeth. So those are a couple other hints. The other thing with raw food is that it actually contains those natural enzymes to help resist bacterial plaque. So there's numerous things we're using when we use raw meaty bones, raw meat. We're gaining all sorts of benefits and feeding a biologically appropriate food to our dogs and our cats. And so bones that break teeth, I want you to stay away from these, okay? So make sure you write these down. If you have them in your house, throw them away immediately because they, they tend to lead to fractured teeth. So these would be your nyla bones. So those like white chewy bones that are fake plastic bits and dogs eat like bite off plastic. They're super hard and they also create fractures. Uh, cooked bones. So I'm talking about raw bones. Never feed a cooked bone to your pet. Antlers. I see it all the time with antlers, small diameter, thin. So they're using a harder force to chew on those and that creates that slab fracture. Shears off the enamel. So don't use antlers, use those knuckle bones, hooves and bully sticks. I know a lot of people are feeding bully sticks. So transition your pet to these other, these other options that are better for them and come with less risk. Okay, food, food is medicine. You knew I was gonna go there if you've been following me. So what are some of the supplements? What are some of the, we talked about food, of course, your biologically appropriate diet, but what are some of the supplements that we can use that fill in those gaps that are missing in that diet? So we have antioxidants. I love using antioxidants. Every day, our pets are being exposed to stress, just like we are. They're being exposed to our stress and how we handle stress. They're being exposed to toxins. And what these antioxidants do is they help with that chronic oxidative stress. So when that happens, we're seeing inflammation. Your pet's getting stressed out, cortisol's increasing, that chronic stress response leads to adrenaline and all sorts of other hormonal actions that lead to inflammation, diseases, cancer, all sorts of things. So one of the antioxidants that is super powerful in helping with dental disease is CoQ10. And human studies have actually shown how low CoQ10 levels actually lead to an increase in periodontal disease. So we can add in CoQ10. I use this for a lot of pets that have chronic illnesses, cancer therapies. But if your pet has inflamed gums, they're prone to bad teeth, you need to add this in. VetraScience has a great product, CoQ10, that you can get. VetraScience is a great 
company that I, I love and trust. And so typically we're looking at one milligram per pound daily. So say you have a 30 pound pet, 30 milligram dose of CoQ10. It's a much higher dose than what is typically recommended for a daily value. And as we know, a lot of recommendations are for balance. They're not necessarily optimal levels. So this level is higher, but it's a safe antioxidant we can utilize to help your pets with their chronic oxidative stress. The other thing is folic acid. And folic acid actually helps preserve gum tissue. So your cats with stomatitis, your cats with your resorptive lesions, so common. You can use food. So guess what's high in folic acid and CoQ10? Because we can use food as medicine. Organ meats. So that's where we can use a combination of liver, kidneys, heart. Heart is amazing. It has lots of taurine in it too for everyone who's worried about the heart issues that with grain-free diets. There's a whole nother talk about that. We just covered that in our Natural Pet Tribe membership. So if you want to go deep in that, make sure you join that at thenaturalpetdoctor.com. But we can use food to heal the body. Shocker, right? Oh my gosh. Yes. I know I say it all the time, but organ meats, also fatty fishes, salmon, high in CoQ10, which is fantastic. So we can use these different foods, these different meats, these different organ meats, and then add in the supplements if we feel like we need an addition from that we're not getting from just the food itself. So that's a big one. The other one is fatty acids. So omega-3 fatty acids. Use this for pretty much any inflammatory disease. Guess what? That's everything. Not every pet can tolerate omega-3 fatty acids. And a lot of times it comes down to brand and the quality and is it actually being absorbed by the pet? So Nordic Naturals is my number one recommendation for most pets. Some pets can't tolerate white fish. So then we look for other options or we can use things like the krill oil, but omega-3 fatty acids reduce inflammation. And here's a product that is awesome, that is not talked about enough and I looked it up and it's available. So get your pen, get your paper, or rewatch this when we post, post it again. It's called Elite Science One, is in the number one, T as in teeth, D as in dog, C as in cat. So Elite Science One TDC. And this is a unique fatty acid oil that specifically reduces gingival, so gum inflammation. And it's pretty impressive the results that people get. And you can apply this topically on the gums too. So definitely check that out. If you are dealing with a cat that has stomatitis and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to remove all their teeth. These are things that you need to try first before you go in for the full mouth extraction for some of these cats where that's like, there's nothing left or you've tried all the really strong drugs and it's not working. That's where we need to turn to food and supplements and see if we can actually heal the body rather than just treating a symptom. And then the other thing is to probiotics. We are talking about microbiome. Microbiome is huge. So if we are not treating the microbiome appropriately, it will lead to inflammation. It will lead to disease. It will lead to frustration. It will lead to increased vet visits and vet costs. The same is with the oral cavity, and we can use probiotics to manipulate the oral microbiome too. So not only are pets' GI health lower down, where we talk about it a lot for chronic vomiting, diarrhea issues, if your pet has a gurgly belly, or they're just not digesting their food appropriately, we, we can use probiotics to change the oral cavity. And yes, Sherry, your pet has gingivitis at Elite 1 TDC is exactly what you want to try, along with all the other things I'm talking about too. It is worth trying, may not work. The things I'm talking about may not work for your pet. And that's where we can use other things. That's where I turn to looking at an individual pet. Okay, what are their imbalances? What can we use for herbal medicine? So that's what I do in my specific consultations is take 
rather than just doing generalizations like we're talking about now and what are the specific problems for your pet so if you need extra help or you've tried these things you're like dr katie this doesn't work that's where you need to book a personalized consultation because we go deeper into your individual pet but definitely these things are safe i'm not going to recommend something that's not safe and has science behind it too has some research and it's worth giving it a try so probiotics the one thing that we don't talk about enough and i know i haven't talked about enough with my patients when there are when there is dental disease is applying probiotics topically to the gums so let's say you're using proviable good broad spectrum probiotic meaning that there's numerous different types of bacterial strains and it has been shown to have what it has in it we can give it orally like we normally would but you can also open the capsule and dab some on the gums so for pets that have gingivitis, like Sherry, you mentioned that, you can put probiotics topically on the gums too. Sometimes that's hard to do with especially like cats or dogs. So try your best knowing that, okay, we're trying to change the population of bacteria in the mouth to reduce inflammation and put the good bacteria into that oral cavity. So do it in the food. So they're ingesting it. It's helping their lower microbiome but it's also helping the oral microbiome by using it topically too. So that's a really cool way to help the mouth achieve a healthier biofilm and reduce inflammation and potentially help prevent and treat any like dental disease that's there. One of the other products that is really good for dental disease too is also standard process biodent. So, I use standard process for a lot of patients. You can only get it through a veterinarian. Um, so if that's something you're interested in looking at, reach out because this is an amazing product. And what I love about standard process is they use whole food ingredients. They use organ meats. They use all sorts of really good products. And so this is a cold pressed ground bone, minerals, adrenal glands, and other organ meats that actually support healthy teeth, supports the connective tissue and the bones. So there do, it does a lot of things. And we see a lot of dental disease. 70% of dental disease is underneath the gums. So for everyone who wants to avoid anesthesia and they're getting the sedation-free anesthesia, and that person is just scaling the teeth, if they're not polishing the teeth afterwards and they're not getting underneath the gums, what just happened is they actually created more abrasive action on the teeth. Your, yes, your pet's teeth look cleaner, but now there's a surface for food particles to stick more easily. So I don't recommend them. If you're gonna get a dental cleaning, get a true dental cleaning. But first of all, implement these things first because you may not need the dental cleaning. So super important. Um, Sherry, great question. If your dog eats blueberries, will that introduce probiotics to the mouth and gums? So I love blueberries because they're a great antioxidant food. So they don't have a lot of different strains of bacteria though. So what we want to use is use those great antioxidant foods like blueberries and then also introduce probiotics. So use a great probiotic to gain both benefits. So that's really important. So going back to some other ways to remove tartar so active plaque removal this is where brushing the teeth at least three times a week removing the food particles remember we can remove dental plaque but it comes back in 24 hours because the saliva has those calcium cations that are interacting with the different bacteria and the food particles to then form tartar and so we need to keep up on that, but that's where we can also use those rotty, raw meaty bones for their abrasive action. We're getting those raw enzymes, those natural enzymes to help with the oral microbiome too. So that's super important. If you're still with me and you ask questions about essential oils, this is where we're talking about essential oils. So essential oils are very powerful at reducing inflammation. They can be used effectively to help almost any condition. They can be used inappropriately to create a lot of problems. And that's why vets and a lot of pet parents are terrified of using essential oils because they've been used inappropriately, wrong dosages, 
wrong products that have adulterants, have synthetic ingredients in them, and those lead to the side effects that we see, less is better with essential oils. Very concentrated plant compounds. That's what essential oils are. So we need to be really careful with them and avoid certain ones for cats. Cats lack an enzyme to in their liver. So they actually lack a, a series of enzymes in their metabolic pathways to detox. That's why they're sensitive to a lot of things that dogs aren't sensitive to because dogs have those enzymes to break them down. But we can use coconut oil. So coconut oil has lauric acid in it. And it's a great antibacterial. It's also used for antifungal properties. So we can use that as the base and then as the dilution part for our essential oils. And the essential oils that are really good at reducing inflammation, clove, lemon, peppermint, we have orange, basil, myrrh, cobiba, so many that we can use. One drop in a big batch, like 10, 15 mils of coconut oil to dilute it. You can dip a toothbrush in this or a finger brush, those little pet finger brushes, dip it in there and brush with that and aim for the gums. And that's gonna help reduce inflammation. Now, if your pets have severe gum inflammation, they're not gonna tolerate that. And so what you can do is there's, there's rinses and other products that you can use that have this, so dog breath from Animal EO. So Animal EO is an amazing company that you can use that is safe for dogs and cats. It is made for dogs and cats by a veterinarian who has been using essential oils forever. Love her, Dr. Melissa Shelton, doing amazing things. So Animal EO. And this product has coconut oil, cobiba, peppermint, helichrysum, which is amazing for any type of inflammation, and myrrh. So get those, use them, start using them frequently for your pets. Look at your pet's food, look at the pet food label ingredients, learn how to read those labels. Number one thing that I want all pet parents to know is how to read a pet food label. Go to our blog posts at thenaturalpetdoctor.com, go through those blog posts, read the things about what is in my pet's food, how do I read a pet food label, it is the number one thing that will help your pet through life is knowing what's in my pet's food, what is it doing, is it helping or ha potentially harming them, and then we look for supplements to fill in the gaps. We use things like essential oils. We use those raw meaty bones. We use safe treats. We get rid of the antlers that can break our pet's teeth. We get rid of the bully sticks that break our pet's teeth. And you continue to empower yourself to learn the things that are going to give your pet lifelong health and vibrancy. If you want to learn more about the microbiome, that's what we're mentioning this whole month. Go through our blog posts, go through all the social media posts on the National Pet Doctor at Instagram, Facebook, check out our YouTube channel. There's a lot of information there join our webinar this month. Make sure you register for it. It's all about how to optimize your pet's microbiome to prevent disease. We can prevent disease by optimizing your pet's microbiome. Yes, it sounds simple and it truly is simple. There are things that we can tweak that don't cost a lot and don't require a lot of effort that will lower your vet bill costs and give you a happier and healthier pet. And we're doing a giveaway our gut health product. So definitely join because you will gain a lot of information that you can start implementing today. So next week we are going to do kind of a summary of some of the top tips on feeding your pets because we talk a lot about this, but this is just so important. It is the foundation for your pet's health. So make sure you join us for our coffee talk with the doc next Saturday, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, Love seeing you all here. Make sure you register for our webinar this month. It's going to be fantastic. There is a replay. So if you can't make it live, there is a 72-hour replay for you to watch it when you're able to catch it. So go to thenaturalpetdoctor.com. You can register there. There's also a link in our Facebook page, The Natural Pet Doctor. So thank you again for being here. I appreciate all of you. 
and have a fantastic weekend. Have a fantastic week. And I will see you next week for our weekly coffee talk with the doc. I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor.